Hey guys and welcome back to another Is It Worth It? I think this will be number 9. Um, had a little break. Uh, the little lad has been on holiday for 6 weeks from school. I'm sure everybody who has children um, they have the same same difficulties trying to keep uh, kids entertained through the summer. Um, so we're going to get into um, one or two things that I've got here lined up for you. Uh, the first one, heritage auctions. This is more about information rather than anything else that's going to be happening within heritage. Um, heritage auctions. Um, I recently come across um, some information uh, that heritage allow consigners. Uh, if you don't know what cons consigners is, these are the people who uh, hand over their goodies over to heritage for uh, for sale. Um, <coughs> These people, um, the consigners, are apparently allowed to bid, or shell bid, shall we say, as that's what it is, everywhere else in the world apart from the state of Texas. These people are allowed to shell bid on their own auctions. Um, I've just recently come across this, and uh, I'd put it in a, a, little, f a little group that I'm in. I'm actually in with uh, Mr. Newman Stacker, and of course he was defending it and so on. But uh, I'm going to show you... Uh, exactly what I mean. Um, now apparently Texas is the only state in America that allows you to shell bid on your own items. Um, so if you kind of like, I'm just going to show you where it is. I've already lined up the uh, terms and conditions because that's where you'll find it. But if you click on any of their any of their auctions um, and you scroll down, you'll find here terms and conditions of auction. Now, as I said, I've lined that up here. I've got it here as the uh, um, a little document here. Now, it's number at the bottom. If you read at the bottom, it's number 13, conducting the auction. So, if you read there, notice of the consigner's liberty to place bids on his lots in the auction is hereby made in accordance with Article 2, of the Texas Business and Commercial Code. So there you go. Uh, consigner's liberty to place bids. Now I'll let you read that little bit here. And then we'll scroll up because there's a little bit more at the top here. Uh, if the hammer price does not meet the minimum bid, the consigner may pay a reduced commission on those lots. Minimum bids are generally posted online several days prior to the auction closing. For any successful bid placed, now you're reading this now, for any successful bid placed by a consigner on his property on the auction floor or by any means during the live session, now that means that he is actually shell bidding his own auctions, uh, blah, 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 there you go. So now you can see why uh, perhaps Heritage um, gets so high price. Uh, high price for the um, certain certain coins or or for a lot of their coins um, is because the uh, the people who actually own the coins are probably bidding along with you. So that's something to be aware of uh, if you're ever going to bid within um, heritage. Um, it's not a practice that I like, as you know. I did a video recently. It seems nobody took notice of that, but uh, you know, I did a video recently on shell bidding um, from uh, a couple of guys that we know and um, it's not a practice that a lot of people like um, and a lot of people you know I, I do know a lot of people do it obviously and here you can see that so does heritage so that's that okay let's go on to the next bit there's a few or a couple of things a couple of auctions or well, one auction in particular that's coming up um, I think it's on around the 24th of September and it's from Spink. Now Spink, uh, Spink is probably one of the biggest uh, uh, dealers in, in the UK. Um, they have Spink UK America, Switzerland, China and so on. <coughs> and they have a nice auction coming up and it's called the Waterbird collection of choice numismatic rarities. Now if you look here, there's only 65 lots. Um, so they are they have some some uh, quite 
uh, rare coins in there. And if we just load this one up here, here you'll see, for example, the first coin. This is the coin that's uh, actually sitting on their, their front page. And as you can see here, it's of Edward VIII. Um, and if you don't know who Edward VIII was, he should have been king before Edward VI, but he didn't. Uh, he didn't uh, become king. He abdicated uh, because he was in love with the commoner, and Mrs. Simpson from America. Now uh, I got an email. I've seen. I've, I've been looking at this catalog for a few weeks, and uh, NGC recently just sent an email about this uh, auction, uh, basically because uh, Spink had uh, got these coins graded from uh, NGC and as you can see here it says Edward VIII was king only from January uh, 20th to December 11th 1936 well he wasn't king he didn't actually become king uh, Edward VI became king so um, but he did abdicate the throne he didn't want to be on the throne so if we where was it now go back into Spink yeah yeah uh, where is it now here? Uh, uh, where have been? Ah, here we go. Here we go. Here's the catalog. So he never became king. He fell in love with uh, Mrs. Simpson. Um, so these are some numismatic rarities from um, this Waterbird collection. I don't know who actually is Waterbird and who the guy is or the persons are. Generally, when you've got a collection like this, that's a name collection, these people generally like to keep anonymous. Um, now, one coin I did want to go into, um, here's a list here of, of some of the coins here. Um, one coin that I did want to get into was, uh, I'm trying to find it here. Uh, penny, penny, I thought we'll go through it. Ah oh, no, here we go, here we go. Uh, this one. Sorry. The lot 39. Um, I actually owned uh, an 1854 shilling. I bought that back in 2016. I'll show you that in a second. But I wanted to get to the coin itself. So lot 39. In fact, well, what we'll do is, you know, I'll scroll, I'll scroll through and let you have a look at some of these prices. As they are fantastic. But uh, it's definitely something that I won't be uh, opening my wallet on as I can't afford that sort of money. <laughs> but uh, there you go, there's some beautiful coins in here. Um, definitely, it's definitely been pick, picking up some rarities, whoever the person is. And uh, yeah, it's really quite something else. And you can go, if you go to spink.com, you can uh, go into their auctions and then you'll be able to find. Um, their auction catalogues that are due, um, they generally they come up um, maybe about two weeks before. Now they're saying this one here is an 1808 unique penny. Uh, so there you go, there's a the price there, 80 to 100,000. be interesting to see how these coins do, especially these type of coins, these unique coins, because they have uh, really nothing to go against. Now I know... Um, that uh, Edward VIII they did some sets, um, some trial pieces and made up sets of um, the coinage that was going to be minted uh, before he abdicated, before Edward VIII abdicated. Um, and I believe it was Goldberg's who had actually had a whole set of these uh, coins and I believe they sold them, for, that's a nice coin. I believe they sold the set for about 1.4 million. Um, so there, I don't think there was any gold in there. I'm not entirely sure, but I don't think there was. Uh, 1854 Florin. Now 1854 is, a, is quite a rare date for those who don't know. And 1854 Florin, I mean, that's a really good grade uh, for those Florins. Uh, they really don't come up for sale uh, that often. I mean, you can see here, this was... Uh, 2009 from DNW um, and I haven't seen many of them 63 that's also rare 64 with the heavy flan 
Now I'm getting to, to the coin that I'm wanting to show you, which is uh, lot 39, which is this one here. Um, this is uh, an 1854, the four struck over a higher four. Now, I do have a problem with this grading because this is graded as an MS-64. <coughs> and I'm going to show you why in a second. <coughs> Let me just see if we can bring it up here. Now you can see, from the toning, you can see how the silver, silver uh, spots all around these leaves and so on. And then the hair as well. That means there's wear. And now well, this is a, supposed to be an 1864. I'm going to show you my uh, eight, uh, eight, sorry MS64. I'm going to show you my MS62 that I bought in 2016. As you can see here, look. There you go. There's my name, David. Now here's my MS62, and this is why I have a problem with that coin being an MS64. I think. I think some people just basically get a higher grade because you've got a name collection or something like that. Uh, so I'm trying to enlarge this. Uh, it's not going to enlarge. Let me just do it that way. Oh, it's not going to do it that way. It's just been a pain in the butt right now. But there you go. This is this was my coin, and as you can see, there's there's virtually nothing nowhere on that. So and this was only graded at a 62. So I, f I do find it very strange that that one that I've just showed you was as graded as a 64. I mean, it's like there's marks on it here. There's, there's a mark running right out the mouth. Um, so I just uh, I find it really strange uh, that it was graded less. Let me just see. If we can... Oh, I need to sign in again. I'll well, we'll just leave it like that for now. But there's a label number there. If you want to have a look at the coin, um, take the label number, go into NGC, and you'll see this coin. This is an absolutely stunning coin. Um, and as I said, I don't, I don't understand this how much I paid for it. That was including buyer's fees. But um, I don't understand why it was graded so low, uh, or why this one is graded so high. I just feel as though there's too much, too much wear for that to be an MS64. Uh, again, you can see the little pearls there around the cowl here of the uh, crown, and here and the crosses on the crown. Um, I just feel that that's been overgraded, in my opinion. Uh, now, this says it's a four over a higher four, um, but in this auction that I bought this from. Um, that this alt one also said that it was uh, a blundered four, so which gives me the impression that it might be. Now, if we go into ESC, the new ESC, which is English Silver Coinage, which is kind of like the Silver Bible of the British British coinage, um, they have the ES. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, eighteen fifty four shilling rate is R two, um, and but they've also got a four over higher four. Which is red R4. So I'm just wondering whether this was actually a 4 over a higher 4 um, and actually an R4. But um, as it is, that was a really nice coin. And uh, as I said, I don't know why this, this one was graded higher. So let's just have a look through a little bit more. Uh, 1863. Now then, if we go up a little bit, there's also 1851 is also a rare date. Um, 1850 is the rarest date. So this is, uh, I mean, this is only an XF45, but my God, you don't see many 1850 uh, shillings in such a, a decent grade. And that is actually a decent grade for an 1850 shilling. And uh, there's another one there. Both graded as XF45 by the looks of it. That's uh, 51. Yeah, this one's an XF45. And so is this one. But you see what I mean by the hair. This is this is one of the highest points of wear uh, on uh, Victoria. And you can find that on most of our, our coinage, like including including sovereigns and and whatnot. Uh, but 
that is one of the points of wear and as well as these leaves here in the laurel <coughs> that's another high point of wear just so you know uh, what else have we got this one is probably in 1893 yes it is sixpence but it has the uh, different bust as it should have um, da -da -da -da. So as you can see, there's some rarities in there. Um, I've got a couple of other other coins. I'm I'm actually looking at an auction. I've got a couple of bids on, so I'm not going to highlight these just now. But this auction and uh, this pink auction is on the September twenty fourth uh, this month at uh, three o'clock. Uh, you can bet your bottom dollar there will be some some bids. Uh, let's just actually let's let's see what the Edward the Eighth is uh, valuation is. There's another rare one. It's got a, a die a die number there in between 1863. You see it right there, right at the bottom. That's a die number. They're extremely rare. <coughs> There'll be some penny fans after that one. 1869 is also a rare date, but uh, I have seen. Uh, higher higher grades than this one. I think that's a little bit expensive. 1860 is that over 59 possibly? I don't know. That's a half penny. Let's see what else there is. Die letter A. Interesting. I have an interesting story about die letter A. Um, I actually bought one of these. Um, it was in a PCGS holder, and it was actually graded as uh, MS64 or 65 um, and I bought it from a, a French dealer and uh, I'd actually noticed that it wasn't labelled as die letter A by the side of the lighthouse and I had paid 200 euros for that coin I sent it back to PCGS in Paris I sent it back to them I asked them to look at it again because there was a die letter A and I asked them to put the uh, the certificate proper, make the certificate right and add the die letter A and now bear in mind I paid 200, 200 euros for that it was an MS64 and I actually sold that for £4,000 about four weeks later die letter C <coughs> um, 1905, these are quite rare, I had one of these um, a while back Again, I paid, uh, I think I paid about 1,300 euros for good, very fine. Uh, and I actually sold it to a dealer for about 2,500. Um, what else do I have? Let's see, I'm trying to find that penny. Where the hell is it going? There we are. There it is. Uh. So there you go, 60 to 80,000. Provenance, Mark Rasmussen. Mm-hmm. Sorry, just having a drink of tea. I, I heard this was in uh, Mark Rasmussen's uh, little vault. And he has some nice coins as well. Uh, actually, this might have come from a set. You see here that these are the reserve, saying that the reserve price was not met. Uh, so it's been up for sale before. Uh, this coin originated from a six coin part set. So as you can see, this is what uh, was in the um, Edward the Eighth crown, half crown, shilling, sixpence, penny, and farm. The sixpence with the set was passed by this auction. Uh, Eventually selling for thirty four thousand. That was for the sixpence. So there you go. Um, that's uh, some of the coins that are in this waterbird collection. And um, I hope you guys uh, sort and take notice because, as I said, I, I'm I'm not sure that that eighteen fifty four is um, I'm not sure that 1864 is uh, really uh, 
uh, an MS64. I think it's uh, a little bit too worn in my opinion for it to be at 64. I would have said a 61 in my opinion, but that's just me. Uh, who knows? So just uh, before we go, um, obviously uh, the Queen's Beast, uh, the White Lion of Mortimer, these have just been released. Um, let's just go into the one answer. To be honest, not a big fan. I think it's trying to kind of replicate a little um, the first one. Um, I'm not, not a big fan of the, the paw there. And, um, the mean, it just seems a little bit, I don't know, just doesn't seem to fit it. The ear as well. Eh, it's just me, I don't know. I'm just not a, a big fan right now of modern coinage. Um, starting to get back into um, numismatics uh, where uh, it's an absolute minefield. People trying to increase prices, uh, dealers trying to increase prices, uh, private sellers trying to increase prices. Uh, everybody's trying to increase prices for uh, their uh, coins. Um, and and uh, especially when they're trying to get them slabbed uh, for the only reason they slabbing is, is in my opinion is uh, for, for greed, is for more profit. That's just my opinion, uh, from some people anyway. Um, the other one that came out at roughly the same time was the mouse. Now, I'm not a big fan of this one either. I'm not a big fan of the Lunars now. Um, this one kind of looks, looks like a mouse that's trying to pole dance to me. <laughs> trying to pole dance. Uh, it just, uh, where's this other leg? I mean, it looks like it's that. Uh, this, it just doesn't look right to me. Uh, as I said, it looks like it's trying to pull dance or something like that. But um, that's just my little take on that. I'm not going to go too much into, into modern. I'll leave that one to um, Shadowstock and uh, anyone else who's interested in these sort of things. I, I'm kind of kind of starting to get drawn away from uh, from these now. So uh, um, I will only buy. Um, modern, if I actually really like it, and uh, this one, uh, it's it's uh, it's not for me. Okay, guys, I'll wrap this one up here, and uh, as always, uh, like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, I'm going to catch you up on another video. Uh, I'm going to do another video, uh, probably at the end of this week or the end of next week, after <laughs> after the two coins that I'm watching have been through the auction house, and. Um, We'll see how these go. Okay, guys, uh, as always, as I said, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next video.